opening up a heavenly account. Yes. Hallelujah. Open, opening up a heavenly account. Yes. Well, what brought this message to my heart the other day, I was listening to um, one of my favorite TV programs, uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland, Gloria. And they were reading a letter that they got that touched their hearts in such a way they was reading it on the program, and it touched mine in such a way that I thought I'd share a few words about that letter. And then this woman had wrote in, and, and she had told uh, uh, Brother Copeland her testimony. This woman uh, was in real financial difficulty. She was really going through some things and she was at the point where she was getting ready or, or they had already filed for bankruptcy and uh, they were foreclosing on her house. Um, they had 10 children. Can you imagine that? 10 little children and they didn't know what in the world to do. As I was preparing for this today, I felt like God have somebody under the sound of my voice that's going to hear this message for the first time they're wondering what in the world is that preacher talking about opening up a heavenly account? How many knows what I'm preaching about today? Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Uh, they were being kicked out of their house, but in the meantime, oh, I'm glad that God is a, a God who's on time. I'm glad that God knows what we need. I'm glad that God can set up an appointment for the needy, and that's what he did for this woman. This woman heard Brother Copeland uh, teaching on this program about opening up a heavenly account. Amen. These people had heard the Copelands give their testimony about how that they were, when they first came to God, they were living in poverty. They heard their testimony how that they started out and uh, they uh, was living in a little shotgun house, didn't have a refrigerator, didn't have a king-size bed or a queen-size bed. All they had was a little rollaway bed that they were renting. And all they had to cook from was a little uh, electric coffee pot. And that's the way they'd cook the rice. That's the way they'd cook their potatoes and everything that they would cook. They'd have to cook it through that little coffee pot. But thank God one day, uh, he, he, he was telling this on telling me. He said uh, one day he was at an ORU service, Oral Roberts Ministries service, and he was able to open up a heavenly account. He didn't even understand it when he went in there, but God opened the eyes of his understanding. He, he went home. Um, Kenneth, all, he didn't have no money on him, didn't have a dime, but he heard that how you could sow a seed and open up a heavenly account. So what he did, he took his ink pen, threw it in the offering plate, and he, and he promised God. He said, God, it, I'm going to sow this ink pen. I'm going to put it in the offering because it's all I've got. But as soon as I get $10, I'm going to sow it in the ORU. Well, he took that pen, put it in the offering plate, and thank God, God supernaturally right on the spot started working. Amen. God started moving in his life, and uh, God, see, the Bible said God will give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So um, before Kenneth got out of that meeting that night, the ink pen was in offering plate. Uh, there was a woman walked up to him and said, Brother Copeland, I don't know why, but God told me to give you $10. He knew why. Amen. He didn't do like a lot of people who promised God, God, if you'll, if you'll bless me, then I'll, I'll give. No. Uh, and when God starts giving to you, you start eating it and, and spending it on toys. And come on, I'm going to preach to you today. He did what he said he's going to do. He took his seed, run the offering plate down, got his ink pen out, and, and sowed that first $10. Boy, he was ecstatic. He was excited. Amen. Uh, and he, ran, he went home. Gloria wasn't at church that night, so he ran home and told his wife that uh, him and Gloria had become partners with ORU. Amen, and he was so excited. He said, Gloria said, for $10, we've, we're going to start giving $10 a month to ORU. Amen, because, and as we give this, my understanding is that when I give, I become a partner. And when you become a partner, you become a part of. 
Woo, glory to God. Somebody ought to praise him. He said, Gloria, with $10 a month, we're going to so we're, we're sowing into oil. Oral Roberts' life, we're sowing into his ministry, and therefore we are partners, we're partakers of the same blessing, the same anointing. Thank God he was so excited, and then all of a sudden, Gloria hadn't been in church that night. How many knows how y'all, if you hadn't been in church, somebody else comes home is excited. You ain't as excited as they are because you wasn't there. Well, that's good preaching right there. And she said, here's the words come out of her mouth. She said, how in the world are we going to get an extra $10 a month? Here we are living like we are. Having to cook out of a coffee pot, roll away bed and uh, no refrigerator or anything. How in the world are we going to afford $10 a month? Now, now, let me tell you, this was the Copelands in the early beginning. Now, God's got somebody listening to me today that's getting the first, you're getting some information you need to know. You can open up a, a heavenly account. You can tap in the anointing, praise God, of prosperity today by being obedient to God. From that point on, Kenneth said, we are partners with ORU. And, and uh, when he started sowing into that anointing, that anointing started, anointing started coming to him, started coming to his spirit. Wisdom uh, started coming. Understanding on prosperity started coming. Revelation started coming. And Kenneth said within 11 months, he and his wife were completely out of debt, and they've been out of debt ever since. Now, if you want to get out of debt, come on, somebody. Tap into somebody's anointing that's come out of debt. That's good preaching right there. So the word the, uh, produced revelation, and, and the word produced an anointing in uh, Brother Copeland's life, and heaven began to come down. Eleven months later, he was out of debt. That family heard that same testimony. You know, I heard Brother Mike Murdoch give a testimony one Sunday or, or one one day, and, and my eyes clicked open. My I, my understanding popped open. I, I saw some things I'd never seen as clear in all my life that I could sow a seed toward my need. I could tap into uh, Brother Mike uh, Murdoch's anointing by giving, by becoming a partner. And I sowed that seed that day, and I, I, I'm not going into all that today. Church knows about it, but God brought me out of debt. I'm blessed. Come on, somebody. Well, this woman was listening to Brother Copeland's testimony, and, and lights begin to come on, revelation begin to come. She began to think, if God can do it for that, those people as poor as they are, why can't God do it for me? Oh, I could give you a testimony this morning. You're looking at... I've, the pastor right now that that when we started here my mom brought seven kids and didn't have daddy with us at the time he was an alcoholic and mama didn't have any transportation she'd have to ask for rides and and mama got to every service that surprised me how people can't get to the church got two or three cars and mama didn't have one but she got to church Amen. We were, re we were raised. Daddy was part of the time of his life, uh, was sick in hospital. And so we were, you know, we were poor. We had to de depend on the government for uh, some of that uh, cheese they talk about. Some of that uh, peanut butter Criflo Dollar used to eat that you could take and wad it up and knock a window out of a car. Amen. So I know all about that stuff. I know about powdered eggs. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I know how it is to be poor. We were the poorest in the church. We had to depend on people to bring us to church, but we got to church. And today I stand here as pastor of this church reaching all over the world through television and radio. Thank God. Church is out of debt. We're out of debt. So listen, if God can do it for the Robinson family, God can do it for your family. You know, I look back on all that. I know now why God let us be raised the way we were so I could get up here and tell the world about it. Some of y'all ought to get excited if you're broke, busted, disgusted because God can bring you out from under that cloud. Can the church say amen? I'm talking about a supernatural way to come out of debt and have all your needs met according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well, Brother Copeland gave his testimony. That woman heard it and she received it. And oh my God, See, she hadn't been a tither. 
Best news she ever heard, best preaching she ever heard was that she could begin to tithe, begin to give into the house of God, give into the work of God, and God will start working for her. Some of the best news I ever heard, some of the best news you'll ever hear, here is when you get a revelation of this and start doing it. She started giving. She started giving right off the bat. She started giving. And, uh, and her testimony in the letter was that uh, since she started giving, God didn't let them file bankruptcy. God didn't let them lose their house. I'm preaching better than some of y'all. Come on, some of y'all get excited. God didn't let them lose nothing. And, and, and at this time, this woman wrote this letter. She said, not too long from now, me and my husband's going to be completely out of debt. And she gives God the praise that God let her hear a word on the heavenly account. Everybody ought to give God a hand clap today if you've ever heard the message on opening up a, a heavenly Account. Everybody say a heavenly account. Praise God. I want to ask you a question. Do you have one? Do you have a heavenly account? If not, you need to get one opened up. I tell young people, you need to get you a savings started. Don't wait till you're 60 year old to start saving. Start your savings up now. And same thing when it comes to spiritual babies. You need to open up a heavenly account right now. I'm going to ask you, are you a partner where there's an anointing flowing from it? Amen. Some of you are wondering, what in the world's a heavenly account? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you right now. Turn your Bibles over to Philippians. It's in the Bible. Turn your Bibles over to Philippians chapter 15, 15 and 19. And the Bible reads like this, but my God. Everybody say, my God. Everybody say, but my God. Everybody say, but my God. Sal, what? Supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Everybody say in glory. By Christ Jesus. What is that talking about? Riches in glory. That's a heavenly account. Praise God. That's good, isn't it? Praise God. Let me back up to verse 15. I, I didn't... Start at the right place, did I? Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed out of Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning what? Nobody was given to his ministry, and therefore they wasn't what? It says concerning giving and receiving. So if you give, you might as well expect to receive. It said nobody was given... Nobody's receiving but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, you gave once and again into my necessities. Oh, listen to this. Not because I desire a gift. Not because I desire a gift. In other words, it's not because I want something from you. In other words, I'm trying to get something to you. Amen. Notice this. Because I desired not a gift, but I desired fruit that may abound to what? Your account. There's the heavenly account. Everybody say a heavenly account. But I have all in abound. I am full. Paul saying, God's took care of me. I've got everything I need. Amen. Having received of Ephesus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell of sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Did you know that your giving is a sweet smell of sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God? But then the verse we started out with, which I should have saved the last because I didn't have it on my um, (laughs) computer, but amen, it's there now, isn't it? Come on. But my God, everybody say, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Here was a church that had learned not only how to give or how to sow, but how to make deposits. Amen. But how to make withdrawals. They made deposits and withdrawals. Amen. Let me tell you something. You can't make no withdrawals unless you've got an account. I've 
drive up to a bank and say, I want to make a withdrawal, they're going to ask you, what's your name? Amen. If you don't have no name in there, you ain't going to have no account there. You ain't going to get nothing from there. Somebody say amen. You got to have an account. Matthew 6 and 19. Matthew 6 and 19. Here's a heavenly account. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon this earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through to steal. But lay yourselves up treasures where? Heaven. Everybody say in heaven. This is your heavenly account where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where the thieves don't break through nor steal. This is a heavenly account. I said, while well, ago, if you don't have an account at a natural bank, you can't make natural withdrawals. Same way spiritual. If you don't have a spiritual account, you'll never be able to make spiritual withdrawals. Now turn over to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8. I know some of y'all's heard this so much, you could quote it to me, you could talk Tell me the same thing I'm getting to tell you right now. But some have never heard this. Somebody will praise God. Somebody's getting a new breakthrough today. Somebody's getting a revelation. Malachi chapter number 3. We want to start with verse number 8. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Amen. How can you rob God? It said, yet shall you, you have robbed me. God said, you're robbing me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In other words, how have I robbed you, God? The Bible makes it plain in your tithe and in your offerings. Therefore, listen, ye are cursed with the curse, for you've robbed me, even the whole house and the whole nation. It says, bring ye all. Now, some, some pays, they'll tip God. They don't bring all their tithes. Amen, they'll... They'll, uh, I tell you, if they miss a week at church, they don't pay the tithes. That's stealing from God. It says, bring ye all, everybody say all, all. the tithes. Where? Into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows. How many knows when you go to the bank, they open a little window to you? Come on. When you write a check, they open a window, don't they? Amen. You make withdrawals in that window. You make deposits through that window. Amen. If you'll make a deposit, in other words, if you'll pay your tithe and offering, he said, I will open to you the window of heaven. Everybody say the windows of heaven. God will open it up and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able or you'll not be have room enough to receive it. Can the church say amen? I will rebuke the devourer. I like this. What is a devourer? It's a seed stealer. God promised if you open up account, amen, he's, you pay your tithes and offering, he said, I'll rebuke the devourer. That stuff that steals your money. God said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Amen. If the devil's all the time stealing from you, stealing the fruit of your ground, amen, you need to check up. Are you a giver? Are you a tither? Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before time in the fields, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome in the land, saith the Lord of hosts. Can the church say amen? Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, what have we spoken such against thee? Ye have, have said, it is in vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have not kept, we have kept his ordinance and that we have, have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And I tell you, when you give, God will give it back to you. Amen. All right, let's turn over to Mark 11 and 38. No, it's Mark 6 and 38. Everybody say Mark 6 and 38. All right. It says to give, and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For at the same measure that ye meet with all, in other words, what you give, what you sow, amen, what you give to God, 
what you meet with all shall be measured to you again. In other words, what you give, God will give it back to you. And, and I didn't mark this, but the Bible says when you give, there'll be 30, 60, 100-fold returns. Amen. God will measure it back to you the way you gave it, 30, 60, 100. Amen. And so, listen, if you give with a grudging heart, uh, you know, and wish that you'd have kept it, amen, you've killed it all. You don't get nothing. But that's why I encourage people to clap, shout, give God praise that you're a giver because God loves a cheerful giver. When you give, God gives it back. When you deposit, it'll draw interest. Amen. I was looking at an annuity the other day. And uh, anyway, this annuity that I'm looking at, it gives up to 9%. That, and 9% is big. Amen. 9% is a pretty good uh, return. But can I tell you, God promised 30 you can't beat God's way of giving. Amen. And let me tell you something. Uh, these annuities, uh, this ministry I was looking at uh, has this annuity. And um, 9%. And it was guaranteed. When you get, uh, you know, retirement age, you'll, you'll be able to draw, you know, for the rest of your life by sowing into that, by giving into that. But I'm going to tell you something. God's got a better one than that. That's man stuff. But let me tell you, God's got something bigger. Somebody hit me preach. Well, I've heard some testimonies. Just, I mean, I hear them every week. I, you know me, the pastor, I get, I, I'll get an email or text, a picture or something, how God's blessed somebody. There's a man come in the prayer room last night, and he was excited because God helped him pay some, uh, a piece of equipment off this week. Somebody give God praise for that person. <laughs> You know, if I had equipment and I owed on it, that's when I'd get on that. Glory to God. And I'd give God the highest praise. Somebody hit me preach. If I needed a house and, uh, and you heard somebody got them a new house, amen, I'd start praising God for their new house. God gives back the way we give. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's why God blesses some people more than others because some thinks when they threw that in there, they about get mad because they think the preacher's going to, you know, going to abuse it and use it for something. Hey, let me tell you something. If you wonder why, how we've used the money around here, look around. Everything's paid for. <laughs> Ain't no way we could have done what we've done if, <laughs> if it wasn't being God's way, if, if God hadn't have blessed this place. You can see the blessings of the Lord everywhere around here. We couldn't be on television, couldn't be on radio, couldn't be doing what we do right now. Praise God while we're in here right now, we're preaching to the whole world. We'll be on in Israel today in Bethlehem, preaching all over the Middle East, Baghdad, Iran, Turkey, Greece. That's amazing for a church. Be able to preach all over the world. And how's that happen? God, through God's people. Let me tell you this, what you make happen for God's kingdom, God will make happen in your house. Whatever you let go, when you let go of what's in your hand, God lets go of what's in his hand. When you send something up, God sends something back down. I'd get excited about that. Man, I got some fields that's sold right now. I've got some harvest that's going to come back to me. Hey, man, when they do, I'm not going to be surprised because I've sold. And I, hey, man, God's not a liar. Everybody look at your name and say, God's, God's got a God guarantee on my tithe and my offering. There's something supernatural that ever happens whenever I give. God turns around and anoints that whew, glory to God. My 10% turns around and lays hands on that 90%. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody praise God if you're a giver in here today. When you, when you give, the Holy Ghost turns around, the anointing imparta, turns around and touches that 90% and anoints it. Preacher, I ain't barely getting by now. I can't afford not to, I can't have paid to, afford to pay no tithe. One of the fat woman I was talking about at the start of the message had done that. She'd have lost her house. 
Come on, she had filed bankrupt. She had lost everything she had. Amen, 10 little babies, but now they'll be in debt here in a few days. Ah, that sounds far out. That sounds beyond my imagination. Sure it is. It's supernatural. I said it's supernatural. It's something the Holy Ghost does. Hallelujah. I listened to a man just a few weeks ago and he was talking about having, it was up in the millions of dollars. I think it was uh, nine, nine million dollars. Nine million dollars. His, his need nine million dollars to do what God had told him to do. And it didn't look like it's going to happen, but God told him to do it. Hey, man, you know what happened? One man, one man, I said one man, one man. called him up. It don't take a hundred men. No. Don't take the big army. If God be for you, who can be again you? One man called him and, and, and asked him, said, Brother, do you have a need? Uh, are they in need? And the man was, had to be honest, said, yeah, I need uh, $9 million. <laughs> the guy told him, give me your bank account a number. Think about that. He said, I don't usually give my bank account number out, but he said, there wasn't nothing in it anyway, so... He gave him his bank account, and by the next day, the man had enough money. Somehow, would praise God. Ah, yeah, yeah. If you don't believe it, you ain't going to receive it. I've been around. Some of y'all's got an attitude now that I pick up on while I'm preaching. I, it comes to me real heavy. God reveals to me stuff, and he shows me. There's people in here that thinks, well, I, I, I need my tithe more than... God needs it. God don't need anything. No, it ain't that God needs it. It's that you need it. I said, it ain't that the church needs it. The church is out of debt. We're doing better. I have to say it. We're doing better everywhere. I, not in one area, but in every area. In every area. This church is doing better. It's ever done in all the history since I've pastored. And I've been here nearly 40 years. So we're doing all right. Some of your tithes wouldn't be over $20 a week. Some of your tithes wouldn't be over 30 And you steal that little bit that God wants to bless and anoint. There's something. You're missing it somewhere. And I feel sorry for it because you're killing your harvest. Just barely getting by, scraping to get by. Hey, man, let me tell you, every time you turn around, it feels like a hole comes in your back and you just drop out everything. Honey, let me tell you. you and, and some of you that give say, well, things happen in my life too. Let me tell you, you better be glad you get, you're a giver. It's come to me yesterday. Thank God you're a giver because if you wasn't a giver, what, what, what would it be? Somebody give God some praise in the house. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Somebody giving praise in this house. I wish it would dawn on people. Dawn on people. Amen. That when you give, God gives it back to you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaking together. Running over. God wants to bless you. When I look at these TV preachers, I think, I think if God wants them blessed, God wants me blessed. I can't help. I was born over here, in, uh, you know, uh, born in Tennessee and and sent to North Carolina. Hey, man, can't help. I was raised on welfare. Can't help none of that. Can't help none of the start. But I had something to do with my finish. Somebody help me preach. Somebody help me preach. Somebody help me preach. Somebody help me preach. If I ever die, you won't have to go pick, you won't have to go and take up an offering. It'll be paid for. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. That's the way God, God wants you to leave an inheritance for your children and your children's children. It's in your Bible. Can the church say amen? If God wants to do it for Paula White, God wants to do it for Lisa. If God wants to do it for Rod Parsley, God wants to do it for David. Help me preach in this house. Some of y'all eat. Snacking and eating your tithe. 
wasting it for foolishness when you could be putting it in.